Hi, this is Dawn here uh, to share with you a story that happened um, a few weeks after the resurrection of Jesus. Um, and to share my excitement and, you know, what I really see as, you know, sort of a repeat of the call to mission um, for all of us who are on this, this journey. Um, so let me just go ahead and read you from John chapter 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So this, uh, this story, really a remembrance, um, is very precious to me. And uh, I remember, it's funny, I've heard this sermon preached a number of times um, in churches through the years. I haven't, you know, been affiliated with uh, a church for a long time. But um, I've um, often, you know, when I've heard it preached, it's funny, it's like I'm always trying to think, you know, and I, to try to wrap my head around it um, because I do remember um uh, or I carry soul memories anyway of the um, those early uh, days after the um, resurrection and the years and it, to include um, the beloved disciple John and the, the revelation writing of revelation and this gospel which is different than the other three gospels are known as synoptic gospels um, and um, I'll share that elsewhere, but um, in any case um, so through the years I've gotten uh, copies of sermons and it's like I, I just want to I just want to remember it again, you know, and just imagine this, though, 
you know, Jesus has appeared to his disciples mainly through locked doors um, in rooms, um, you know, when um, he showed Thomas his hands um, uh, as evidence and proof um, to witness to the death and resurrection um, of Jesus. And um, another time, um, you know, where he... Um, you know, in both times, you know, when he appeared before, he was talking about his peace um, and that he would send one, um, an advocate. And um, here on the shore, this is such a human story, isn't it? <laughs> They're out trying to catch fish. Um, and this, these are the early weeks um, after the resurrection within, you know, the first 40 days. And um, there are, you know, can you imagine all the emotions and just the, you know, the ups and downs that have happened already, uh, and who knows what to make of, you know, what is happening here and where this is all going, um, and here is Jesus cooking breakfast on the shore, and once again, you know, effectively um, working a miracle, <laughs> and, uh, and always and ever calling uh, his closest followers back to the true mission feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And this is um, really an echo that I hear right now. It's like, you know, it's so amazing that um, all each one of us is here now and that we are participants in this great unfolding um, for humanity. And so uh, I just wanted to share that story with you today um, and um, encourage each one of you, um, you know, those of you who are um, in contact with your beloved and those of you who um, are still in a, in a place of holding that space uh, for that time to to step forward and do what you can to you know feed um, feed my sheep feed my lambs and to um, the way that we do that um, is is by holding that frequency of unconditional love and simply by being present to um, every situation that we walk with, you know, walk into, and um, being the magnificent uh, light, life, and love that you are, that unique representation of God here on earth, um, and walking in the way of wholeness as Jesus did, and uh, so beautiful. So, much love. Bye.